Hello, my name's Spencer Stumbaugh, and welcome to Chapter 8 Physics, Linear Motion. Actually, I lied. Chapter 8's about rotational motion, but it has something to do with linear motion too. Son of a bitch, this is a good workout! Oh, hi, I'm Daniel Zavala. Linear speed is what we've been calling simply speed. The distance in meters or kilometers per unit of time. Oh, chrysanthemum. 50 points. Oh, hello. The speed of an object traveling in a circular path can be referred to as tangential speed because its direction of motion is always tangent to a circle. While rotational speed refers to the revolutions or rotations per unit of time. Tangential speed, unlike linear speed, depends on how far away an object is. In our next demonstration, we will be showing this by a ladybug on a record player. Okay, now for our demonstration, we're going to show you how tangential speed is affected by the distance of an object. So right here, we got a ladybug on the outside of a record player. Now I'm going to measure the distance around the record player. Alright, roughly it is 37 inches. 37 inches around the record player. Now that we have the measurement of how long the path is of the ladybug, we need to find how long it takes for the ladybug to travel one complete rotation. Danny, hit me with that baby making music. Alright, I'm going to put this right here when I say go, Danny. You ready? Three, two, one, go. Stop. 1.31. 1.31. Now we did that a couple other times just to make sure we got the right average. So it is 1.31 with our distance of 37 inches. So it took 1.31 seconds to travel 37 inches. Now we're going to show you how long it's going to take for that to travel half the distance. Okay. So... The radius of this is six inches. And that's, uh, you know, we figured that out in the last one by measuring around it. We actually used pi, too, to check ours, and it was roughly 37 inches, right? So now the path, we put the ladybug halfway in between where it was last time in the center. So it's now three inches out. And now that we move the ladybug in three inches, which is halfway, we're going to see how long it takes to go around and it should be the same time to my calculations. Danny, hit me with that music. You got it. You ready for the timer? Yeah. Go. Time me. I'd say roughly about 1.31 seconds. Amazing. Same time. Now we're going to do a little math later to show you what that means. Hey, let's talk about Roma. Rotation of motion. As you saw from our last demonstration, we gathered information from a ladybug going around a record player. First, let's talk about rotational speed. It took the record 1.31 seconds to make one revolution. If you divide one rev by 1.31 seconds, you get 0.76 revs per second. That's its rotational speed. But now let's talk about tangential speed. As you saw, we had the ladybug first six inches out, which its path went 37 inches around. One revolution, 37 inches, took 1.31 seconds. As you divide 37 by 1.31 seconds, you get 28.2 inches per second. Now, we move the ladybug in halfway where it's at 3 inches. Now, its path is 18.5 inches per one revolution, which took the same 1.31 seconds. As you can see, we did a little math here, and, it went from, and we took 18.5 inches and divided it by 1.31 seconds and you get 14.1 inches per second. Now that is exactly half of the speed of the ladybug when it was twice as far out. So now we find out that a ladybug or any object that is twice as far out will have double the tangential speed. Amazing. Danny, I'm gonna need more TP! Fuck! <laughs> 1001, 1002, 1003. Oh, I didn't see you there, but if you overheard, 
I just did over 1,000. Next, we will be talking about torque and lever arm. But you should check out these arms. Torque is a rotational counterpart of force. Force tends to move an object, while torque tends to twist the rotation of an object. If you want a stationary object to move, simply apply force. If you want a stationary object to rotate, then just apply torque. Daniel, what are you doing? Geez, Spence, I'm out here being a grease monkey, but I can't seem to undo this bolt. Easy, Daniel. If you apply the principles of torque, you will know if you hold your hand twice as far out on the handle, you will apply twice as much torque. Geez, thanks, physics! Any force directed towards a fixed center is called a centripetal force. Centripetal means seeking center or towards the center. In the next demonstration, I will show you about centripetal force by doing gentle circles in the bins because last time I did donuts, my parents beat me with a belt. In this demonstration, we have an example of centripetal force. As you can see, no matter what way the car is rotating in the circle, the gold chain is always pulled away from the center, but yet the car stays in a circular path because the centripetal force holds it in place. If the friction between the tires and the road is broken, we say the car skids. Centripetal force. Sometimes, in a circular motion, we seem to experience an outward force. This outward force is called centrifugal force. Centrifugal means center fleeing or away from the center. In this next demonstration, we will be showing centrifugal force. As you can see, I am swinging this bucket around. But why isn't the water coming out? Let me tell you. Centrifugal force! The water is fleeing the center, causing it to go against the bottom of the bucket, which prevents it from going outside the bucket. Centrifugal force! So Daniel, what did you learn today? Well Spencer, today I learned about centrifugal force, centrifugal force, torque, lever arm, and rotational motion. But most of all, what did you really learn? Physics rocks! Oh, yes. I